But we use this occasion with the last ever game to be played at the Oakland Coliseum to do a draft of the baddest Raiders of all time. I don't know whether we approved ultimately the most badass Raiders or the baddest Raiders. Either way, that's the spirit of it. It can be Raiders from any era at any time. That's the draft. Chris, you've got the trivia question to determine the first choice. Go. All right. Well, as you know, they're playing their final home game in Oakland against the Jaguars. In the history of the Raiders, this is amazing, actually. In the history of the Raiders, only one player has made 10 or more Pro Bowls. Who is that player? Art Shell. Ah, oh, good guess. But no, it will be a Jim Otto. Jim, Jim Otto. Oh, double zero. Jim Otto. Uh, I knew it was somebody on that offensive line. Yeah. It was either Upshaw, Art Shell, or Jim Otto. Good all guess, right, good. good. You guess. get the first pick. That's all right. That was, a, that was a tough one. That really was. It actually is surprising with such a great franchise that that's the only one. I would have thought maybe there'd been, you know, one or two others. But um, all right. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I got to start here. When you're talking about badass Raiders, I mean, I'm going with Al Davis to start it off. I mean, he's the one that started the badass Raiders. I mean, he is the guy. He's the guy that used to walk around in a white leather jumpsuit with a, with a Raiders emblem on it, encrusted in diamonds. I mean, come on. If that doesn't look like a badass right there with a pinky ring, bling, bling. I mean, he fought against the NFL. He instilled the attitude of the Raiders into that organization that all came from him, a Brooklyn guy, a tough in your face. Like, if you don't like it, F you, just win, baby. The reason the Super Bowl rings are the way they are today is because of Al Davis. You were only allowed to spend a certain amount of money on the rings. So he maximized that. And then he told the company, charge me $10,000 for the box of each ring. And that's why they are the way they are too, which is amazing. So uh, Al Davis is the leader of the badasses when it comes to the Raiders. Yeah. I mean, look, there's only one guy in the franchise. They light a flame for before (laughs) every game and it's Al Davis. So I agree with you. That would have been my pick too. Thanks for the difficult trivia question back there. I would have had the I take back my compliment from earlier in the program about the split screen with me and Chris and and Peter King. All right. Uh, boy, and there are so many different ways you can go with this now. But I got to go with Ken Stabler. Yeah. I mean, when I think Raiders, I think Ken Stabler, a guy who was denied admission to the Hall of Fame unjustifiably for years, a guy who led the team to its first ever Super Bowl win, a lefty, a guy who just in the 70s. And, and that was the era where I first discovered football. The Raiders were always good the Raiders were always competitive that sea of hands throw that ended the Dolphins dynasty at the end of the game the catch by Clarence Davis in the end zone incredible plays by Ken Stabler when when I thought Raiders I thought Ken Stabler I mean I thought he was the guy with the eye patch on on the side of the helmet that's the Raiders to me and uh, he's always one of the first guys I think of when I think the Oakland Raiders yeah I get it I think that would have been my next pick too or would have been my first pick if you got Al Davis yes Uh, I mean come on He's a lefty quarterback one. He was a badass. I mean, you know, it just seemed like the type that be, he might've drank a beer and smoked a cigarette at halftime in a game and been like, Hey, screw you. I'm still going to go out there and throw three touchdown passes. Quick story. We're playing the Raiders in 2004. They're talking about me maybe becoming the starter and replacing Brad Johnson, right? We go out there to play a game. I wear a throwback Ken Stabler Jersey to the game, right? And because I'm like, Oh, I'm going to pay tribute to a lefty here. I'm going to wear the, white Ken Stabler jersey and I'm thinking I'm cool and I got guys in the locker room like man that's a great jersey all of a sudden John Gruden and one of his assistants comes up to me and they were livid that I wore it why would you wear that jersey I can't believe you wore that Al Davis is gonna love that you wore that jersey and I was like I, oh, okay I don't know what to say I, I mean I wore the jersey to pay respect to the guy but uh, they were they were pissed off that I wore that jersey that day did you hear from Al Davis about it no I never did no but uh, I got a Little, spent a little time with Al Davis before. It was a very, very special time to be talking football and almost like talking to a Bill Belichick where you're just like, wow, this is amazing. Did he call you Phil? Uh, no, he did not. Most people do, but he did not. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. I'm stuck here. There's so many good guys to pick from, but I'm going to go with one from my childhood uh, that I really think of when I think of the Razors, and that's Lester Hayes. Lester the molester Hayes, okay? Because I just think he exudes Raiders like in your face cornerback remember he used to have his fingers taped up and he'd have them between his legs and wiggle in his fingers like come on bring it and then he'd have like to stick them all over his hands and arms 
So when he did jam the receiver, they almost like stuck to him that way. But uh, I, I got to go with him because I just remember – watching my dad play him in, you know, 1986 and other year during that time frame when I was very young and just going, who is this guy wearing 37? He's so cool and just in your face. And, of course, he was one of the best corners in football and uh, kind of just he, – he, he meant Raiders to me and one of their, one of their all-time interception leaders for the Oakland Raiders as well. Yeah, and, and I remember those days where they had that stick them just gooped all over right. them on their helmets, on their shoe, on their socks, everywhere, just just dripping. There's some photos out there, and you can just see it just dripping off of Lester Hayes' hands. But he was that first the, – the, the first cornerback, the first modern cornerback for me that really resonated is a guy that just was a shutdown guy. They still kept throwing it his way, and he still kept picking it off. I, I'm going to stay and, – and this really gets difficult. There are so there are many so badass many. Raiders. There is. Over the years. It's amazing. And, and this and, and this guy was a Super Bowl MVP, even though Ken Stabler led them to their first Super Bowl win against the Minnesota Vikings. And I remember watching that game, game very closely and not being very happy with the Raiders when it ended. But Fred Bolitnikoff yeah. was incredible. Wearing that floppy helmet with the, the, the two bar face mask and just get and back in those days, you paid for it. Every time you caught a pass, you paid for it. He probably paid for it in practice against the likes of Jack Tatum and company. Right. He definitely paid for it during games. But Fred Bolitnikoff was was uh, one of a kind, Hall of Famer. They named the College Football Award after him for the best receiver every year. Uh, Bolitnikoff was one of a kind. And and again, I feel I feel like I'm gonna. We, we need to do five no, rounds at do. least to get to all the guys who deserve it. Who do you got next? Yeah. Well, I know. I I do. I feel bad. You're right. I, I'm gonna go with Howie Long, but I really want to pick kind of Jack Tatum too. But it's the last one, and I'm gonna. Go, I already picked the DB, so I'm trying to change the wealth here. I'm going to go with Howie Long because, like, Howie Long is, I mean, of course, a Hall of Fame defensive lineman. You know, he kind of, like, exudes, like, toughness in your face in a silent type of way, maybe not as brash as, you know, some of the other personalities we talked about. But also, he's an Oakland Raider to me from the standpoint of, like, okay, uh, you want to step outside when we're in the bar and Howie Long will, like, you know, knock you out and, like, seven other people all at the same time. I mean, his head is the size of a cinder block, okay? So he's intimidating that way. But then also very California, Oakland Raider-ish that where, yeah, he could beat you up in a bar fight, but at the same time, after that fight's over, go to a GQ cover shoot and be like GQ man of the year in Hollywood and so handsome and like perfect that way too. And to me, that's part of the Raiders as well. Their showmanships, their their Hollywoodness of that franchise to where uh, Howie Long's still doing great things on Fox and TV and everything like that. I got a, a lot of respect for him. My mother... My mother has a crush on a gigantic crush on Howie Long back when he was playing. Same with my Aunt Wendy. You know, my Aunt Wendy watches the show. She loved Howie Long. Yep. (laughs) Yep. So, uh, and it's right. He didn't, he didn't, you know, he wasn't the guy that would take your helmet off and hit you over the head with it, at least not when anyone was looking. Right. And uh, he had a different image than the other Raider renegades like the Bill Romanowski's, the Lyle Alzado's, the John Matuzak's, but still he was he was a badass in his own way. Yeah. I do have to go Jack Tatum. Yeah. And look, what what happened with Daryl Stingley was uh unfortunate. Um it's something that you'd get ejected from the league forever for if you even came close to it nowadays. I don't know how Jack Tatum would have survived in today's NFL. But in the 70s, that's the way it was. And the NFL marketed it. I mean, they eventually would make the videos with all the big hits. And Jack Tatum had a ton of them. He was an intimidator. His book was They Call Me Assassin. And uh, he lived up to it every time he was on the field. There he is. Think about that. If you That's the what? Sammy White hit from Super Bowl XI that knocked his helmet off. We thought that was kind of quaint and neat at the time. That's yeah. just football. If you would do that now, oh. you would be removed by security. You would be suspended, and all rightfully so, but it just shows you how the game has changed, yes. but how brutal it was back then. And Jack Tatum was the guy who who was identified with that brand of football. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you want to talk about a receiver, and you better have a, your head on a swivel. Holy cow. I mean, there's no wonder the guy only played nine years in the NFL. I mean, not only did he knock other people out, he, his body couldn't take any more of those car crash collisions. But, yeah, he's certainly one of the guys that deserves to be on this list. All right, you got any more or is that it? Well, that's it. You no. got one more? Throw one more in. Well, uh, I mean, Ly- you said it, Lyle. I, was, I mean, there's so many, like, because, like, Tim Brown is awesome, right? And, but I don't know if I'm going to put him in the badass category. 
So I guess I kind of go Lyle Alzado next. He's the next guy that'll jump out to me that way. Uh, you know, just just again, in your face, unbelievable personality, will beat you up, intense, got to, you know, talking crap on the sidelines. Yeah, I mean, we know he experimented with some drugs at the time to make himself even more of a badass. And But I don't know. Holy cow. He just threw that guy's helmet at him. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's a Raider. That's a badass. Thank you for supporting me with that video evidence uh, back in the control room. I appreciate that. <sighs> And, you know, he didn't play for the Raiders for very long. He had most of his career with the Broncos, but we only think of him as a Raider. Yeah. I mean, it was like he was destined to be a Raider. Oh, God. he uh, Yeah, football was different. <laughs> football was very different back in the 80s. No doubt. And Alzado, uh, a quintessential Raider. Last one for me is Ted, Ted Hendricks, the Mad Stork. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard that nickname, the Mad Stork. I thought, that is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and Ted Hendricks was awesome. He played uh, with the team for nearly a decade. He was with the Colts for a while, the Packers for a year, but kind of like Lyle Alzado. When he finally landed where he was supposed to be all along, it just it just worked. And uh, Ted Hendricks, my last pick. We had to take a break. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.